had with my mom at the very beginning um, and the end of her um, illness. And when mom was first um, diagnosed with breast cancer and had her mastectomy, Lisa went on hundreds of walks with mom through the neighborhood. Mom was convinced that she needed to get into shape, and Lisa was her third daughter um, that lived across the street. So thank you, Lisa. Um, I have the honor today to read a little eulogy from Paige. Um, Sylvia's oldest daughter, who could not make it here, but was a blessing in the last few weeks of Sylvia's life. So these are the words of Paige. <clears throat> it is my honor to memorialize my mother, Sylvia. There are so many, so many different areas of my mother's life that can be memorialized. The things that I'm going to touch on today are just a few of the qualities that I liked and admired about her but there are so many more. Now that I am a parent of two small children and work only part-time, I am in awe of what my mother Sylvia provided to us growing up. <coughs> she worked full-time, drove us to dance and music lessons at least twice a week, and always had a hot meal for us at dinner that we could all sit down and enjoy as a family. My lunches always had a special note from her telling me that she loved me. And my mom never gave me a hard time about eating peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for every day for the last for 10 years. She knew that it would make me happy to have a lunch that I liked and would eat. And it did. Some days I struggle to empty the dishwasher because life is so busy with young kids. But I never noticed that my mom, that with my mom. My sister and I always came first, never grudgingly, and she provided us with rich, full life of culture and knowledge. My mom was so compassionate during the middle and high school years when most parents threw up their hands and locked the doors to keep their children in or out of the house. When my first serious relationship ended in high school, she took me out for a piece of pie and some retail therapy. <laughs> we shopped on the second floor of Warren Stocks at the clearance racks, of course, because we both love a sale. I was very teary and sad, and she kept busy looking for outfits for me to try on. I had never cried in a department store before. She kept telling me that getting my mind off things, looking pretty in a new outfit, and having a piece of pie would help me feel better. She really did understand teenagers. And of course, I did feel better at the end of the evening. But this event was typical of my mom. She never belittled my feelings as a child, never suggested that they weren't real or meaningful, painful or joyful. She was present. As a teenager, she allowed me to figure out who I was without any judgment. It didn't matter what I wore, and I wore mainly finds from the local thrift store. She didn't care what my friends looked like or what my passions were at any particular moment, and I had many. What mattered to her was that I had the freedom to express myself safely to become who I was meant to be and to learn by experience, to have opportunities to make mistakes and to discover life. When I think about the future and those moments when I will miss my mom, I feel the greatest sadness when I think of my daughter's adolescence eight years from now. I know that my mom would have given me wise counsel. I know she would have helped me to relax Pick the right battles and enjoy my daughter during those years. She said in one of the final lessons that she imparted, someone has to love 13-year-olds. I am so glad it was my mom. Hopefully I can channel that spirit with my children. As a teacher, she had true love for the kids that they, she taught. I can think of a handful of times in 32 years of her teaching career when she had a struggle with a child that she did not feel she could work through. She taught in a school where children had few advantages in life and faced many obstacles to succeed. I remember she told me about one class of seventh graders who were struggling to read. Instead of triaging the situation, putting them immediately in the small groups and calling in specialists, she read to them. She had them memorize Shakespeare and perform acts from some of his best works. She had them recite poetry, and she inspired them to want to read. She taught them that the written word could open up a world to them that they did not know existed. 
She helped them to live outside of their own experiences, even if just for 35 minutes. My mom didn't put her students in boxes and said remedial or average. She gave her students confidence, allowed them to be three teens, encouraged them to develop their imaginations, and showed them love. Did my mom ever love a great bargain? Every time she came to visit, she went shopping ahead of time for new clothes, usually at the clearance racks at Kohl's or Steinmark. Every day she would don a new outfit, and with each new outfit she would proudly announce, do you like this top? $5.99 at Ross. <laughs> I just loved it, and I can't help but do the same. In December, I called her from Kohl's in Nebraska to report that I had just purchased a shirt for 90% off. <laughs> her reply, 90% off? Are you kidding me? That's great. I don't think I've ever gotten something for 90% off. She was so ill when I made that call, but it changed her whole mood. A great bargain puts anyone in a good mood. And speaking of bargains, my mom truly was Martha Stewart of the dollar store. With one dollar, a can of spray paint, a glue gun, and thinking shears, my mom could really turn out some memorable crafts. What I love about her crafts and about how she raised us was that she could take any situation, any material thing, and make it special and beautiful. She made jam for my wedding from fruit that grew on the trees in her yard. People still talk about that jam. She moved her old bathtub into the backyard, painted flowers on it, and grew the most beautiful flower garden in it. She used scraps of material to make one of the kind wreaths that she sent to friends and relatives. She kept a closet full of small gifts and handmade treasures, including homemade peach brandy, that she could give to someone who just happened to stop by. I think she was able to have so many different life experiences because she did so much with the smallest amount possible. I am thankful for all that I was exposed to as a child because of her common sense with finances and her creativity. The days leading up to her death were very much a testament to the type of life that she lived and to the type of woman that she was. In her final days of life, I asked her what scared her the most, and her answer was leaving behind the people she loved. She loved her husband and her daughters. She enjoyed her grandkids and loved having the latest pictures to show her friends. And friends, she had dear, dear friends and neighbors who loved her in the words and actions throughout her life, and especially during the course of her illness. In her most difficult times, everyone showed up. During the last year, she and my father rarely needed to cook because so many people brought delicious homemade meals to them. And when we talked about how she wanted to spend her last days on earth, she wanted to make sure that she was able to reach as many people as possible in her life who had touched her. My sister and I called high school friends, college friends, friends from Vaughn Middle School, buddies from the Gold Dust West, nurses who had cared for her throughout her illness, neighbors and family. She was too weak to talk or even to listen on the phone, but she wanted people to know how much she loved them. There were so many more who we know we didn't reach. She was connected in every area of her life, and everyone with whom we spoke had a really great story to tell about my mom. I worked very hard in my life to have relationships like my mother's. She has set a standard for friendship that I want to achieve. Her favorite movie of all time, and mine too, is It's a Wonderful Life. One of the best lines in that movie is at the very end, after George makes peaceful with his life, makes peace with his life, his failings and his blessings and talks with Clarence the angel who helps him find a reason to live. Clarence says, no one is a failure who has friends. I've thought about whether or not to share the final moments of my mother's life. But the story is poignant and typical of my mom, so I thought everyone would appreciate hearing it. My mother, being a teacher with a master's degree in English, wanted to write her obituary. It was one of the things that she said to me while she was in the hospital, but we just didn't get to it. When we brought her home, she asked me to get in touch with her friends, and she told me that she had a secret phone book. 
I thought that was great, something for, of her own. She told me where to find it so that I could have the phone numbers. And when I looked for it, there was a notepad underneath that contained the writings that had been read today. Thoughts and lessons about life, some funny and some deep and some heartful. She felt, she clearly meant for all of these to be read and shared. In the hours before her death, I reread her stories and then I wrote her obituary. I used her language and her thoughts to tell others about her life. Before I read it to her, I called my sister Dale and asked if she would like to see it before I read it to my mom. I sent the obituary to her on email and then crawled into bed with my mother. She was unconscious, but I held her hand and told her that I had written her obituary and wanted to read it. I told her that I had sent it to Dale. After I finished reading it, I stopped and said, Wait, Mom, that sentence was not written with parallel verbs. Let me reword it. I read it in proper English, and she took her last breath. A beautiful life lived and completed on her own terms in proper English. <laughs> Sylvia Lewis died peacefully at home, surrounded by friends and family, after a valiant battle with the breast cancer. A dedicated middle school English teacher for 32 years, she changed the lives of many young people giving them a love for the written word and the confidence that each has something unique to give to the world. She felt her greatest achievements to be her two daughters and her 48-year marriage. She will be remembered for her wit, wry sense of humor, keen bridge playing skills, and dedication to her family. Sylvia is survived by her husband, Glenn, daughters, Paige and Dale, and four grandchildren. A memorial, no, this is this. A memorial service will be held in early March today. She was greatly loved and will be sorely missed. I love and miss you, Mom. <laughs>